Number 86. Machine A produces 100 parts twice as fast as machine B does. Machine B produces 100 parts in 40 minutes. So there's a machine A and then there's a B. Machine B produces 100 parts in 40 minutes. That's the same as producing 10 parts in 4 minutes. Okay. And uh, machine A produces twice the 100 parts twice as fast. So if it's 100 parts in 4 minutes, then twice that speed would be, or sorry, 10 parts in 4 minutes, twice that speed would be 10 parts in 2 minutes. And the question says, how many parts does machine A produce in 6 minutes? So we no longer need B. B was just to find A. And they're asking, this is how many they create in 2 minutes. What about in 6 minutes? Well, 2 and 6, that's 3 times the amount, right? So you multiply the 10 parts by 3 and you get 30 parts. And that is answer choice A. Number 87 says, a necklace is made by stringing n individual beads together in the repeating pattern red, and then green, white, blue, yellow. Okay, so that's the pattern. If a necklace design begins with a red bead, so it begins here, uh, and ends with a white bead, ends here, what could n equal? They have five choices here, B, C, D, and E. A, they have 16, and 32, 41, 54, and 68. This one is a very tricky question. The first thing you want to notice is that uh, they wouldn't give us all these beads unless the necklace was going to use all of them, right? So the answer is not going to be a, a multiple of three. It's not going to be red, green, white, red, green, white, because there's the blue and the yellow here. So the least it could possibly be is red, green, white, blue, yellow, and then going back to red, green, and ending on white. We want to look for a pattern here. And the pattern here is this is a sequence, this sequence of five. So we're going to have 5x. It's because that multiple, you know, the, we're going to multiply, 5 is going to be multiplied with whatever this multiplier is that we have to find out, right? But after we go through one sequence, there's still an additional 3 beads in order for it to end on white. So we add 3. So we know that n is going to be 5 of 5 times something plus 3. And we just plug in the answer choices. So if n was 16, would that work? So let's try a. 5x plus 3 equals 16 minus 3 from both sides get 5x equals 13. That would not work because what we're looking for here is a whole number. We want x to be an integer. Um, you can't have 13 fifths or, or 5 thirteenths of a, of a bead. It just doesn't work that way. So a is out of the question. 32, I mean that's, mul that's twice of a, so I'm guessing this probably isn't going to work, but but I'll try it anyway. 5x plus 3 equals 32. Subtract 3, you get 5x equals 29. Yeah, it doesn't work. C, 41. 5x plus 3 equals 41. Subtract 3, you get 5x equals 38. Again, that doesn't work. Subtract 54. 5x plus 3 equals 54. 5x equals 51. Ah, so close yet so far. And finally, let's try answer choice E. 5x plus 3 equals 68. 5x equals 65. Yes, and that definitely is divisible by 5. So E is going to be our answer choice. Number 88. Number 88 says, in the xy coordinate system, if a and b and a plus 3, b plus k are two points on the line defined by the equation x equals 3, y minus 7, and k equals what? Okay, first thing we do whenever we see an equation like this, a linear equation, is we want to get y on its own side. We want it to look like y equals mx plus b format. So 
let's let's do that. Let's uh, move the seven over, add seven to both sides, and you get three y equals uh, x plus seven. And then you divide both sides by three, and you get the third x plus seven over three. Now we don't have to actually graph this out. What we're looking for here is the slope, because we're going to use the slope to figure out what k is relative to a and b. So uh, that's a terrible drawing, but bear with me here. Okay, we're just going to make up some numbers for a and b, and then we're going to look for the relationship. Easiest number to make is 0, 0. So let's pretend that, that a and b is 0, 0. We know from the slope that it's rise over run. So the rise is by 1, and you run over to the right by 3. So 1, and then 1, 2, 3. The next point's going to be here, and then you rise it again by 1, another 3, and it's going to be here. And so that is how you kind of plot out the line. So what's this number, or what's this point? This point is going to be let's see, x equals 3 and y equals 1. Well, let's compare the relationship between 3, 1 and 0, 0. If a and b were 0 and 0, and a plus 3 would be 0 plus 3, right? So that's 3. b plus k, b plus what? b plus 1. So k has to equal 1. And 88, uh, there is an answer. d is 1, and that d is the correct answer. Number 89 says, if s is the product of the integers, from 100 to 200, so s equals basically 100 times 101 times 102 all the way to 200. And t is the product of integers from 100 to 201, so basically the same thing, 101 times 102 all the way to 201. Then what is 1 over s, 1 over t in terms of t? First thing first time I saw this question, I freaked out. I, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to multiply 100 by 101 by 102 all the way to 200. That's going to take me forever to do. And I was trying to look for a shortcut, and I just couldn't find it. But it's this is one of those questions where you either see it or you don't. If you don't see it, skip it, because it's going to be a huge time sink. But if you do see it, it's actually super easy to solve. Now, the thing that requires a little bit of intuition, and for you, in order to make this a problem that'll take you less than 30 seconds is to notice that s and t are actually very very similar 100 times 101 times 102 all that stuff it's the same for s and t the only difference is that t has an additional 201 so everything that s multiply together it doesn't matter what that actual number is but what, you know it could be like I don't know, 101, 101, 3, 5, I, I have no idea what it is. Whatever it is, if you multiply that by another, by another 201, by a 201, you get T. So what we really need to do is set a relationship between S and T. And what we know is that T equals whatever S is times 201. That means S equals T over 201. So if we plug this into this equation, what we get is 201 over t plus 1 over t. Add them together, and you get 202 over t, and that is answer choice D. See, once you figure out the trick, this problem is super easy. But if you don't see this, basically you'll be stuck scratching your head for a very long time. Number 90, it says, if Jake loses 8 pounds, he will be twice as much as his sister. So, if Jake, not a, J will be the weight of Jake. If J loses 8 pounds, he will be twice as much as his sister. Together, they now weigh 278 pounds. So, Jake plus his sister's weight is 278 Man, I hope a sister isn't 200 pounds. Well, what is Jake's present weight in pounds? So, what's Jake? Ah, uh, so this will be a pretty simple substitution problem. The trick will be whether we want to find J first or S first. Which one is going to require us to do the least crazy computation? 
I think finding S will be easier in this case. Well, hmm. No, finding J actually. So let's see. J equals 2S plus 8. Plug that into this equation and you get 2S plus 8 plus S equals 278. Add the two S's, you get 3S equals 278 minus 8, which is 270. S equals 90. So we know his sister is 90, and Jake plus his sister's weight is 278. So Jake must equal 278 minus 90. And Jake weighs 188 pounds. That is answer choice E. Let's see if I have time to do one more. Oh. Yeah, I think I do. Let me very quickly do number 91. Okay, 91 says a certain store sells all maps at one price and all books at another price. On Monday, the store sold 12 maps and 10 books for a total of 38. Okay, and then on Tuesday, the store sold 20 maps. So this is Monday, Tuesday. So 20 maps, 15 books for $60. How much less does a map sell for than a book? So B minus M equals what? Okay, well, these are actually just two equations. We just have to set them equal to each other. So we know 12M plus 10B equals 38, and we know that 20m plus 15b equals 60, and then we just find b minus m. So we need to find both b and m. All right, let's do that real quickly. Okay, um, multiply this by 3, you get six, uh, 36m plus 30b equals uh, 24, 114. Multiply this by 2, and you get 40m plus 30b equals 120. All right, then we subtract. We get 6 equals 4m. Is that right? Yeah. So m equals 6 over 4. Interesting. Okay. Where is my cursor? Ah, there it is. Okay. M equals 6 over 4. That's the same as saying M equals $1 and uh, $1.50. Yeah. Okay, let's plug that back into the equation and we get we get 12 times plus 10B equals 38. Uh, 18 plus 10b equals 38, 10b equals uh, 20, b equals 2, and b minus m would be 50 cents, is 2 minus $1.50. That is answer choice, b. And I am out of time, barely made it.